Welcome to Table to Stage. I'm your host, Jordan Worma, and on today's pod, we are going to be hearing from Marina Diaz. She's a multimedia artist uh, who works on unusual or large format pieces, and her work, at least to my eyes, is pretty dark. Sometimes it's borderline unsettling, but it's definitely unique. It's interesting and certainly thought-provoking. Uh, Marina told me that she still sees herself as a bit of a newbie in the world of professional artists, but there is a quality to her work that suggests otherwise. And even though I was first inspired to reach out to her because of the darkness of her work, there was nothing dark or brooding about her personality. Honestly, I was a little bit taken aback when we met. I had sort of spent the morning fortifying myself, thinking that it would be maybe depressing or disturbing conversation, but Marina is not those things. Um, she was kind, she was self-deprecating and easygoing, and wasn't wearing a stitch of black that I noticed. And just between us, it was kind of pleasantly disappointing. I was uh, expecting brooding and angry. Uh, we met for coffee at the Java House in New Milford, and we spoke about her inspiration, how she chooses her canvases, where she wants her artwork to take her, uh, oh yeah, uh, nuns and nudity came up as well. So I know you're going to listen to this now. Uh, and if you're interested in seeing her work, uh, easiest way you can follow her right now on Instagram. Uh, it's at underscore twisted roots art underscore. Uh, and if you're listening to this before October 23rd, then you have a chance to head over to the Oakdale theater in Wallingford on October 23rd for Raw Connecticut Presents Ovation. Um, Marina will be showcasing some of her work there. Tickets are available now at rawartist.org slash twistedrootsart. Uh, and don't forget, you can leave a rating or review on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, or wherever it is you listen to your podcasts. Make sure to follow the pod on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. And you can always reach me by email at tabletostage at gmail.com. Patreon.com slash Table to Stage is a great way to get exclusive content, so check that out too if you're interested. So let's get to Marina Diaz. So we're in New Milford now. Is that where you're from initially? No. No? All right. Where did you come from? I'm from Gaylordsville. Not many people know that's I've a town. I've never heard of that before. Is that Connecticut? <laughs> yes, it's okay, Connecticut. A little closer. So it's, um, it's about seven miles north of here. Uh, we don't even have a stoplight. That's how small our town is. Oh, wow. <laughs> is it just like a one-stop sign town? Or? No, we have more than one. <laughs> okay. I think we have like... 10. <laughs> but um, it's a really rural area right on the border of New York. It's beautiful okay. up there. But um, yeah. that's where I grew up for the most part. All right. Were you like you were born there and raised there? Or? No, okay. I was born in Bristol, Connecticut. Okay. Um, and my mom had me when she was really young. So we stayed there with her mother. And then I kind of traveled all over. I was between Gaylordsville. Yeah. Um, I lived in Litchfield. I actually moved to Maine for a little bit. Okay. Um, but I came back. Yeah. My good old country roots. <laughs> <laughs> so how old were you when you left Gaylordsville? The first time, I would say, I think I was in seventh grade. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 12-ish, yeah, something like that? 12, 12 13. 13. And then they shipped me up to Maine where it took an hour and a half to get to a Walmart. <laughs> So that, for me, that's a good distance from a Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking that Gaylordsville is really small, yeah. that was even more remote. But yeah. um, I definitely, I would call it, that was my grounding stage. Okay. I became uh, acclimated like, with um, nature, and uh, I think I learned a lot of my, my hard roots there. So Okay. So when you first got exposed to the arts in some capacity was that in Gaylordsville or was that while you were traveling around to one of these other <laughs> towns um small towns like that aren't known for their no. big cultural centers <laughs> not really they're known for farms and yeah. goat milk yeah <laughs> um, good cheese I hope yeah I'm not really a fan of that but mm. <laughs> I All would right. have to say I started to get interested in the arts in 
in middle school. Okay. I never really put anything behind it um, until my junior year in high school. When okay. I came back to Connecticut, I actually um, went to Washington Depot. All right, um, so you started high school in Maine? Uh, no, I no, started okay. in Connecticut. Okay. So again, Washington Depot is yeah, another yeah, yeah. really little, small that's town. That's in the northeast corner, isn't it? <laughs> um, it's actually... It's I have the geography <laughs> way wrong, probably. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <all right. laughs> but... Um, it, Chapaug is just a really tiny school. I think my graduating class was 40-something students. Oh, wow. So it was really smaller than mine. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so junior high, high school is when you first started getting into... That's when I started to realize um, I had a knack for it. Okay. And what was the what was it? Was it drawing initially? or? Yeah. I, um, I think from moving around to different schools and um, kind of being socially awkward, yeah. um, they had... Uh, block scheduling so it was really cool we had like hour and a half long classes and I had this one teacher Mrs. Keegan I'll never forget her um, she's like she just walked over to me and she gave me this big uh, sketchbook and all my pencils and she's like you look bored draw something oh really <laughs> and um and you I, had an hour and a half yes of, of four art? classes a day hour wow. and a half long it was painful especially if you had math or science it yeah, was really yeah. bad um, but I was drawing but everything I was draw, uh, drawing was um one dimensional. Okay. And she's like, you have that knack, you just gotta push it forward. So for a whole month straight, she made me draw ribbon drawings to learn the dimension. Sure. Oh yeah, that, that was torture. Contours and <laughs> depth and all that yes. kind of stuff. So you had to learn the shadows and that. And um, I hated her by the end of the, <laughs> the month. <laughs> but then she started to introduce me to um, different mediums. So I started working okay. with acrylics and tempera paint. And um, what was that one? Tempra. It's I've never even heard of that. It's a really awkward. Um, it's I don't know. It's like a cheaper version of acrylic. And okay. it smells weird. I All don't right. really suggest it. <laughs> okay. um, but the acrylic paints is something I definitely grabbed onto, and she just pushed me and pushed me, and I kept yeah. saying I couldn't stand her. And <laughs> was she just? expecting too much like putting expectations mm -hmm. you weren't ready for or something yeah i i doubted myself a lot i don't yeah. have a lot of uh, a lot of self-confidence with a lot of my artwork and still to this day yeah i struggle with that but um she saw something in me and i think that's what kind of sparked that yeah in my career which was really cool okay but i mean having that person that kind of pushed you at mm -hmm. that stage like you got to look back on that now and think of it completely differently oh right? I love her <laughs> <laughs> I, I did I actually went back um the year after I graduated um me and one of my friends we went back to see some of the teachers yeah and uh she was one of the ones I, I ran up to I said thank you for everything that you did because there were some um challenging uh times that I went through during yeah. especially my senior year and um without art I don't think yeah it would have gone the way it did well that's that's good to hear but it's also kind of sad to hear because there's so many arts departments that are yeah. being closed down and yeah <laughs> I wonder how many people are, are sort of being robbed of that experience yeah. of that, that relationship with somebody who can kind of spark a little bit of interest and, yeah uh, well, I'm glad you had that experience <laughs> <Me too. laughs> so you started out drawing got into acrylics and yeah. some painting and it, you do multimedia stuff now is it just strictly is it just drawing and painting or do you use other media um, as, well, as well i would say a couple years ago i introduced photography okay um i started looking into abandoned buildings and find, like i have this thing with architecture i like harsh lines and, yeah um especially buildings that they're going to tear down i feel like we're our generations like our kids are never going to see that they're yeah. never going to know it exists like in our town, across from the Walmart, it used to be all woods, and now it's just... It's like, all development. Development, yeah. and it's terrible, because when I have kids, it's like, oh, this all used to be woods, and I swear we used to play, and, yeah, and yeah, all we yeah. see is a Coles and a Panera Bread. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're like, where? Yeah. Um, but then I also introduced uh, the iPad Pro, so I started getting into computer oh, graphics, okay. which is... Uh, I think that's where my art really started to evolve. Yeah. Okay, so you've incorporated digital yep. in, on top of traditional stuff mm -hmm. or just entirely digital now? Uh, everything. Okay. I still do everything. There's something, it's like grounded. So like when you walk barefoot in the ground and you feel that connection with earth and you reset. Yeah. But when you put that, um, your brush to canvas, you get grounded back to your artwork. It's kind okay. of an amazing thing. All right. Interesting. Yeah. So is there any specific... Um, influence or inspiration that 
you you have on your work, like from either from the things you see or from other artists and other things that you you've experienced? Where do you find your inspiration for the work that you do? I knew you're gonna ask me this question. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is um this is a tough one. So I would have to say one of my biggest influences is um one of my best friends. She's uh, Alana Lawton. She's actually my tattoo artist. Okay. I've known her for ten plus years, and um we've always collaborated and gone back and forth with art. She's always pushed me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's one of my dad's good friends is somebody I grew up with too. Um, local artist around here. His name is Scott Lynch, and um, he's really challenged me and okay. he's really harsh <laughs> yeah oh nice but I think I react better to people that are more brutal yeah um and they just kind of like rip that bandaid off I, I don't like people that sugarcoat or anything right. so if he says you know that looks really really bad you need to fix it A, B, and C and yeah. I'll go back and I'm like okay is this good and I get that what, how, what, what is the difference though between when somebody as, as an artist Somebody saying that's bad and somebody saying that's good because there's so much subjectivity in the way people experience and react to art. Right. So how how can you just tell tell somebody or how do you take that when somebody says that's just bad? Is it just? I mean, it's not. It'd be hard to say. Well, that's just your opinion. So <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, so if I look at this painting right here and you okay. just say it's bad, well, I want right. to know why. It's right. Bad. Right. Like, what is wrong? And it, you might think it bad, but I might think it's great. Right. But I created some type of emotion with you. Okay. You might have, like, some sort of anger towards it because you don't like it. Right. Okay. Um, you just might not like the style. You might not like the subject I drew. Um, but maybe I have an opportunity with my technique. Uh-huh. And if I do have an opportunity with my technique, then tell me how I can improve. Okay. Now, if it's good, I want to know why you think it's good. Yeah. And the same, and the same thing. Okay. That's interesting. So... Where do you find the subjects for your pieces? Because I've looked at the stuff you've done online. Nuns and, and now you're sitting here protection. across from me, and you seem rather friendly. I know. <laughs> rather bubbly almost. Yeah. And you, that's not what that's I was not expecting. What I draw. Like there's some there's a darkness to a lot of the stuff is, that you do. But I like to make the darkness beautiful. Okay. So if you look at like my nun series, it's weird and a lot of people question like that's really, really dark and that seems evil by it. But look at the femininity in her face. Look at yeah. how beautiful her face and her posture is and they're like, Okay. Okay. So it's like I'm kinda of shedding a light to the darkness. No, I don't really have like a certain subject that comes to mind mm-hmm. um, I think more or less is um, is stress management for me okay um, I've dealt um, with severe depression and anxiety um, for over 10 years I've yeah. been on probably every medication that's out there I don't react well to that and um, yeah I had to at some point there actually was um point in my art where I stopped completely because just stop doing art because it shuts off your creativity oh sure some of the medications do and um I had so it wasn't a conscious decision just like I'm gonna stop it was just the desire left right you just become numb to everything around you and that's when I was kind of sitting back and I kind of taught myself with my own artwork you walk into my room and it's almost it's like 500 square foot bedroom but it's a studio and all yeah. my artwork just stares at me when I wake up I'm like you need to finish this yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when you're staring at the same pictures every day for a year straight because you're not touching them yeah. you're like something isn't right here I'm losing that passion Yeah. so when I get stressed out or my anxiety is peaking I put my headphones on and I'll paint for 10 hours straight and won't move really? yeah Wow. And when I'm done it's almost like putting you in a zen like yeah. you're meditating and sure. I just have to get it out it's almost like the old school, like when they used to bleed the, the people to yeah. get the sickness out. It's yeah. it's, like, <laughs> it's like that. You're leeching yourself. Yes. Yeah, a little bit of bloodletting. <laughs> so if, you, if you've got an unfinished piece oh. that's kind of taunting you. Yes. <laughs> what is the feeling like when, when you finally get it finished? What, what is the emotional state? that you find yourself in once you have completed something that's been a long time coming or been or been uh, just kind of taunting you this whole time. Okay, so it depends. If it's on my iPad, yeah, I'm like, yes, kick ass. I finished the picture and then I can upload it to either Visprint, throw prints out, get them sent to my house, or upload them to get t-shirts made. Um, 
but when it's an actual painting, there's actually a sense of sadness when I finish a picture. Oh, really? Because I always feel like I can finish it and make it better. Yeah. And make it better. I have this one painting I did in 2008 in high school that I sold at my one of my art shows, and it ended up circling back, and I got it back. <laughs> really? Yeah, like six years later. Wow. Because a person was moving to California, and like. It's a four foot by eight foot painting. Oh, it's a big one. It's huge. Okay. I, so we'll, I'll tell you about my canvases after. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, but they couldn't take it with them, so I took it with me. And now it sits in my bedroom, and again, it taunts me. I'm like, my art is so much better now than it was ten years ago. Yeah. So now I want to redo it. Now, when you say it's better now than it was, is that the technique thing? Yes. It's so that's a, you think that's an objective observation, like... I am now better at doing this. Yes, I still don't think I'm great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) But if you compare my artwork, um, even in my portfolio, if you go through the last five years, two years, if you go ten years, you're going to see it's such a dramatic change. Huh. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay, so tell me about your canvases then. I don't like to paint on canvas. Okay. (laughs) I paint on plywood, plexiglass, guitar, anything. Anything that's weird, yeah. Plexiglass okay. seems to be one of my favorite ones. All right. Um, one of the abandoned Why? buildings. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> one of the abandoned buildings I got into had a four foot by four foot um, piece, and it's like probably a half an inch thick. Oh, wow. But it still had the original like factory um, paper that was peeling off yep. on it. It looked really grungy and rough. So I actually, one of my favorite pieces I created, um, I left the paper on there, but I kind of started peeling it off. Mm-hmm. It gives it that distressed look. and. Mm-hmm. I'm taking something that somebody was going to throw out and I'm repurposing it. So. Yeah. Okay. But, and then uh, plywood, luon, any type of wood like that, I like it because the way the acrylics dry, the grain shines through it. Yeah. And it just kind of... Do you prime the wood first? Nope. Just paint right on the ply? Just paint right on it. Oh, and mannequins is a new thing. Mannequins. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I did see... I saw yeah, one of those on, on the online portfolio. Someone yeah. was uh, shutting down a... Um, an old clothing mm. shop or something mm-hmm. in Watertown, and I was able to scoop up three of them. So okay, that'll be my new subject. <laughs> now, I think it would be disingenuous of me to say that I, <laughs> I didn't notice. There's a number of nudes. Yes. In the work that you've yep. done. Um, where does that? Why? Why are you drawn to that as a subject? Um, it shows vulnerability. It shows um, just natural forms. Yeah. I think, um, and, and all my subjects are female. I just think that there's something beautiful about that. Okay. Now, is that the same as, like, you put that on? I, I didn't notice what the what the canvas was that you would put those pieces on. Are those also the same large format, like, plywood pieces that you're doing where they're, they're kind of larger than life images of, of these figures, or are they more, more subtle? Um, it's just the picture just blown up to the biggest size I can get it. Okay. Um, Drawing and being confined into a small space, especially on the iPad or, you know, sometimes you just got to let those arms wail. So how how do you start those pieces? Does it start with a photograph? Does it start with a drawing? Sometimes Sometimes. I have have a notebook I keep next to my bed. Um, In working third shift, my sleep pattern is really irregular. Um, I'll sleep in, like, two hour increments and then I'll get up <laughs> and I'll okay. bring my dogs for a while. <laughs> it's really unnatural. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get used to it after a couple of years. Um, you but, just paint your hallucinations after <laughs> yes. a certain point, right? So, well, you, I get up and I'll be half awake and I'll dream of something mm-hmm. and um, and I'll, I'll jot it in the, in the notebook or, you know, I'll, I'll be like, um, for, for example, you open up my notebook right now and it says um, alien puppeteer controlling space. And I, I woke up and I was like, whoa, whoa, mm-hmm. whoa. <laughs> okay. But then I'll run with that idea. And yeah. like, when I'm like at a stencil and I can't figure out something I want to draw, I'll go through the notebook and I'm like, this is really weird. Let's try Well, if you can't find a painting out of that one, you can then start writing headlines for like the <laughs> National Enquirer or something like that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My stuff is very bizarre. Yeah, well, <laughs> some of it is. Like, honestly, I, was, I, I looked at it and I thought, what am I getting myself into talking to this woman? Yeah. The, uh, is it a nun with a contraption in her mouth yes yeah explain this one to me because ball gag. Uh, I, was, I was looking at it this morning preparing yes. for this and my daughter came up behind me oh, the, and i was like oh no <laughs> go away go away i don't know what i'm looking at right now um, <laughs> i don't know and a lot of people ask me where i have this nun 
fascinating. Some people call it a fetish. It's it's not. I'm yeah. not attracted to it. Um, right. I just I don't I don't know. Sometimes I think I just like to create something that's so controversial that you like. It's either gonna spark immediate anger, mm -hmm. but I'm creating an emotion. Right. So. So I'm trying to look at this. Oh, good. This picture again. <laughs> okay. So is that a nun with this? Which one? Because I have a there's, couple. Well, there's the one like, that I can see. There's, I think, oh boy. I'll just turn this around so you can see it. <clears throat> no, that's not that's a nun. That's not a nun. Okay. No. I think I was combining the nun and this one. I do have, one. One. I do have okay. one, though. Oh, do you? All right. <laughs> I do. Okay. No, that's... um. Is, is that just a matter of being able to identify the, the vulnerability in a person? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Because that's, I mean, it, they're... That's Every one of these images that's on here certainly creates an emotional reaction to it. Um, so what, are you ever looking for a specific reaction, or are you just looking to see what reaction you can get? Um, nothing really specific. I already know um, either you love my work or you hate it. Mm -hmm. um, it definitely doesn't cater to everybody, and I understand that. Uh, art is about emotion and reaction sure, so yeah. I just I'm just doing my job <laughs> yeah so what about like when you had, you've had some showings mm -hmm. right you just recently had one. Oh yeah um, what's the feedback like that you get from the people that see your work that may not have known what it so, that it existed before they saw it well, hanging let, on a wall let me tell you about this show <laughs> I was coordinating with raw artists and um, I was supposed to be on the perimeter of the gallery okay. and last minute change they threw me right in front of the ticket booth I'm like oh so like the first thing anybody it saw it was rapid fire okay. I didn't get to move for probably four or five hours all right um and it was older clientele that would walk by with complete disgust <laughs> yeah um I had one girl probably in her early 20s buy one of my nun pictures okay. and her mom made her return it because she really? said she doesn't want it in the house <laughs> You got a reaction. I did. <laughs> but she was able... To, I swapped it out for another picture that okay. was more appropriate yeah, yeah. for her house, I guess. And then um, a lot of um, a lot of clientele that came up, especially from New York or traveled from other areas, they really liked my work. Yeah. And then a lot of people thought my work was photography that was edited. Yeah. But once I explained to them I drew it, then I sucked in a whole other crowd, which was really cool. Sure. I mean, it, I, I have trouble telling, just looking at these, which ones began as drawings yeah. and which ones began as photographs because I guess you draw very lifelike yeah the realism images mm -hmm. so I guess that's I mean I guess that's a, a compliment to your skill as, a, as an artist but is that what you're going for mm -hmm. when you're drawing you just want something to be as true to life as possible yeah um, and then sort of exaggerate mm -hmm. on top of it yeah I, I have a when I look at certain artwork um and i respect all types of arts yeah. from all different types of artists i just i don't personally want my work to portray like pop art or cartoon or bold colors you yeah know. um it's not a comic book right, right <laughs> i want it to be as natural and as real as possible because i want the person who's viewing it to either see themselves in it or i mean there's um, there's no absence of color i mean you yeah, have I mean, some black and white stuff but mm -hmm. i mean there's I guess I would describe most of your colors as sort of muted, but there is yeah. there are definitely some bold. But it's not like color choice. No, it's not like this one that's <laughs> next to us here. It's beautiful though, but um, that's almost like a, a Disney princess fairy looking thing. That's I don't when know. they are <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, But we're not in your studio, so um, do you have one piece that you've done that really stands out to you as something you're particularly proud of, like? If somebody asks to see your work, yes. the first thing you show them? My plexiglass painting. Okay. Um, it's, well, I was going through a uh, difficult time, and I was having a really um, hard time maintaining or controlling, rather, my uh, my anxiety. Yeah. And um, I literally locked myself in my room for two days, like, and I didn't budge. So yeah. it was, um, I had to find an outlet to, to get myself grounded yeah. back to where I need to be, and... Um, this plexiglass has been chilling behind my headboard, and I said, you know what? And um, when I was explaining to one of my friends who reached out to me, they said, what, what are you feeling? And I'm, I can't explain it. Anxiety is, is the most annoying 
thing to have because it, there's so many different types. Some people feel trapped. Some people feel like they're fighting against themselves. Yeah. You feel all these different types of emotions. She's like, draw it. I'm like, I don't know how to, no, shut up and draw it. Yeah. <laughs> and I shot everything off and I did um, a drip painting. And when you look at it, it just kind of looks like um, painting paints that have been smudged all over the plexiglass, but it's actually a man screaming behind glass. Uh, and then I have yeah. another one I did is a woman um, kind of putting her head in her hands. And again, you don't notice it until you step away. So that's actually inspired my next series, which is okay. going to be people that struggle with um, diseases like that. And okay. Self-expression. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm curious about the, the plexiglass one. You said you left some of the paper on that? Yeah, I, I'll show you a picture okay. of it. So, but because, I mean, the, the nature of the plexiglass is transparent. Yes. So viewing it from either side, does it change the experience a little bit? or? Um, no, I mean, the paper is going to kind of yeah. impair your view on the back. But what I want to do is, um, and I, I don't want to separate from this painting. I've had so many offers on it. Yeah, but yeah. it means so much. I will eventually <laughs> sell it. Um, but I want to build a frame, um, just a floating frame behind it. Yeah. And I want to shoot lights behind it to kind of make it more pronounced. Sure. Um, I'm not ready to let it go yet. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll show you. This is hands down one of my favorite ones. That I'm, and I'm not really, you know. So since you paint on so many different surfaces, mm -hmm. does that change the way you have to go about actually the technical aspect of what you're doing? Because the paint's going to set differently on different surfaces. Yes. It'll flow differently on different surfaces. It'll stick differently to different so surfaces. So the plexiglass one, um, where the paper was, it dried, the paint dried immediately. Uh -huh. And then where it, it was actually on plexiglass, it was not drying. Right. And it was actually bubbling in certain areas because of a chemical reaction. And yeah. I was becoming really frustrated with it. Um, so the small corner that I did, I ended up wiping it down, and then I had to just use acetone, okay. and I cleaned it up. It just helped adhere it a little bit better. But when it comes to like the wood paintings, yeah. it just sucks right into that wood. Yeah. It's not a problem. Okay. This is it right here. All right, I'm looking at this plexiglass painting. Oh, man. That is a man screaming behind something, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh... That's an evocative image. Yes. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I swear I'm a happy person. <laughs> no, okay. I'll take your word for it. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, if it's all right, I'll share this yeah, on, my, on my on uh, my Instagram thing. That's that's really cool looking though. Thank you. Um, so, how long have you been what you might consider a part of the Connecticut arts scene? Is it ten years? Is it couple of years I would really say maybe a little bit over of a year okay honestly because um, ever since I was in you know like high school and so I never really wanted to go forward with it I mean, yeah. it was just kind of a hobby um, I think this last year year and a half I was I realized I want to do something okay so did you you made a, a, a definite effort to become a part of yeah, some, of this larger So I experience. created the Facebook page, yeah. I created the Instagram page right now, I'm working on my website. Okay. Um, I, you know, little things like details like getting a PayPal for that yeah. um, and just moving from there. And what, what is, what do you call your, your, um, all of your sites? You have it's a, just Twisted Roots Art. Twisted Roots Art, mm -hmm. okay. Where does that name come from? Well, I always say that we're a little twisted, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. And my parents are artists themselves, but they never really did anything with it. Mm -hmm. um, they kind of lost that knack, so you think about your roots. and Okay. Um, so it, I want to go back to the galleries for just a minute, because you, you just did one recently mm -hmm. in Wallingford, yeah. right? And you said you've had some offers or some interest in doing some coming up. Mm -hmm. So do you go to those galleries hoping to sell something or is it more about being able to see the reactions to your work i just wanted to gain the exposure at the last show mm -hmm. um again lacking the confidence with my artwork um i didn't think it was good enough to showcase um i in this area i've, I've tried multiple times to post myself in local galleries but yeah. i think because myself is a little bit more aggressive it doesn't cater to a certain clientele, especially right. in this area. Um, 
as I started to do like the websites and stuff, I've noticed a lot of my clientele comes from California or Cincinnati or New York. So. Cincinnati. Cincinnati. It's really it's weird. It's not what I think of no. as an art, an art hub. <laughs> no, Cincinnati. but I've had a, a decent amount of clientele come out of there. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. But I was prepared for the art show, though. I mean, I, I made about 500 prints. I sold about 420. Oh, wow. For my first show, that was that was awesome. Very nice. What, yeah. When did you sell your first piece? As soon as the door opened, I had three people waiting at the booth. Really? Yeah. That was pretty in, it was pretty intimidating. So how's, how's that as a have an effect on your confidence as an artist I'm, st- I'm not uh, my ego is <laughs> no nothing still no, huh? my head isn't that big <laughs> um, I'm just humbled by the situation yeah. I'm very humbled by it I'm very grateful for the exposure and definitely to have a new following that's yeah. behind me so well, do you ever just kind of think about that like because you've got pieces hanging in Cincinnati or wherever yeah. like, <laughs> if, if I think the idea of somebody having something that I did so far away in a place I've never been would be a little strange. It it is a little strange. Um, Like I said, it's definitely intimidating. Let's just hold on for a second. It's the beauty of being able to edit. (laughs) That was the other one I did. Oh, wow. All right, so that yeah, that's not colorful. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> but I do, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I don't know. No, that's I'm, that's <laughs> that's great. So, all right, so um, as far as selling your your work, do you sell just prints or do you sell the originals as well? Um. Well, this show I only brought prints. Okay. This last show because it was kind of just getting my feet in the water. Mm-hmm. Um. I kind of kicked myself in the butt for not bringing yeah. my originals. I think my originals would have done really well. Okay. Um, but I think I wanted to gain that following to, you know. Sure. I wanted to, to have that confidence for my yeah. next book. So if I end up going to, if I end up getting booked for the Brooklyn showcase, then I will absolutely bring Yeah, my you'll originals. have to let me know yes. if, if, what the dates of that are going to be because <laughs> that, that sounds interesting. Um, what sort of goals do you have for yourself for the next year or five years yeah so i want to open a gallery open your own gallery i want to open my own gallery okay um i believe that like we have one art gallery here that brings like kids in and Mm -hmm. stuff i feel like in New Milford. Yes, in okay. New Milford. It's right on the green. It's um, it's great. It really is. Um, but I feel like there are more people that have my style of art out there. Mm-hmm. And it's really discouraging when we continuously get rejected and get yeah. rejected, get rejected. Um, I would like to give a, almost like a safe house for them to hang up their artwork or sure. have like some type of like art classes. Okay. But, have you ever done that, like any teaching before? Um, I did volunteer work okay. um, when I was in high school. Um, that was part of our senior project. And stuff, All right. But, um, so if, if you were to get your own gallery, mm-hmm. just let's say it happens yeah. in a, a week. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Um, what, are there any specific artists that you would be looking to, to invite to your gallery alongside your own stuff? The yeah. two that have influenced my career the whole time yeah. <laughs> would be All the right. first ones I go with. Um, again, Scott Lynch and Alana Lawson. They've been amazing, amazing supporters. Yeah. And um, Alana is, um, her work is, I can't even explain to you, is phenomenal. And she paints large surfaces. She's running out of space too, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so she would need a place to put it. Yeah. And um, I, I think just for spring, different dynamics and different types of art would be really cool. You definitely cater to more clientele that way. And okay. All right. Um, so you've got the the thing possibly in Brooklyn coming up this fall. Mm-hmm. Um, anything else on the horizon right now? Um, I'm looking at some collab work, something a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my girlfriends out of Massachusetts wants me to design cosplay for her. Aha. An original character. So okay. Like, okay. Something a little different. Yeah. Um, by how, how do you end up being asked to do cosplay I used to, stuff? I used to do cosplay. We used to, you know, um, her and I, I think, met on Instagram like five years ago. Okay. But um, I think with 
you know, pursuing my art career and yeah. being stuck at work as much as I am. I don't really participate too much now, but yeah. she sees my artwork now and she definitely is going full steam with her career with that and right. just wants my creativity behind it. Did you ever cosplay as a nun? <laughs> no. I did as a, a Silent Hill nurse, though. Oh, all right. The video game, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. That's pretty close. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of. All right. Okay, so... I should have did none. All right. Uh, you're on Instagram. Yes. Right. Uh, Twisted Roots Art yep. on Instagram. Facebook also? Yep. Okay. Twisted Roots Art. And you... You have a website, or I'm working on it right okay, now. working on yep. one. But your stuff, some of your stuff, can be found on the uh, Raw Natural Born Artists yep. site. So I'll put a link for that. Awesome. Um, and I, I hope that people will check out your work. It's really, it's fascinating to look at. And Thank I, you. I'm glad you've been having some success with it. So now I'm going to do some rapid fire okay. questions at you. Um, you said you were nervous before we started recording. And I said, don't be nervous. <laughs> now you can get nervous. <laughs> okay. No, <laughs> this, is, this is so silly. It's not worth thinking about. Uh, your favorite movie? Um, any of the Resident Evils. Oh, okay. <laughs> of course. Uh, the best meal you've ever had? Oh, God. Um, homemade pierogies for my grandmother. Ah, all yes. right. Uh, one place everyone should visit before it's too late. Oh, God. Um, Arcadia, Maine. Oh, okay. It's what about only- that one? It's it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Maine has a really awkward place in my heart because yeah. of living on a farm and goats goats everywhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but Arcadia Maine is um it's a really it's a beautiful beautiful area. It's uh, I believe it's a state park. If I remember. I think so. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. so. Um, but we take the bikes up there and okay. we'll you know camp out and you nice. just lay on a cliff and look at the ocean. It's it's nice. Okay. Um, your biggest pet peeve. <sighs> People who chew with their mouth open. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the first time I've heard that answer. Oh, God, I can't stand it. In <laughs> <laughs> uh, one time in your life, you have laughed the hardest. All right, repeat that. <laughs> one time in your life where you've just laughed so hard, like you couldn't even breathe. Oh, goodness. Just tears running down your face. Um, I was at Stop and Shop, and I turned around, and my butt actually knocked over a whole entire wing sack of... Um, little hair clips and of course my mother and one of our girlfriends was with us and they bolted (laughs) (laughs) and you're talking about like 500 little pieces in the middle Uh, of the floor and I'm sitting there trying not to laugh and it was bad (laughs) yeah you never go back to that stop and shop ever again no I'm good I'll go to New York I won't go to New York I'll drive two hours out of my way to avoid that place (laughs) pretty much all right so the last thing before we wrap up I always like to get a recommendation from everybody I have on the show Something that you've experienced recently that you think other people would enjoy could be from anything. It's so hard. <laughs> it, it can be, yeah. Um, oh, my God. That's, that's probably one of the hardest things to think of. Anything? Any new music you heard, a restaurant you visited, uh, a book you read, um, some, I don't know, meditation. I don't know, something. Something a little weird, but um, I started a Netflix series. Okay. I think it's called Afflicted. It's about... Okay. Um, just people with different types of diseases and stuff that they don't have um, um, any type of cure for. It's a documentary series? Yeah. Okay. I don't know why, but I've been hooked on it the yeah. last couple of days. So. All right. Afflicted. Afflicted. Okay. I'm sure everybody has Netflix at this point. I so think they'll, so. <laughs> they'll run out and watch that one now. Yeah. Um, okay. How are you feeling right now? Good. Yeah? All yeah. right. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate coming thank to, to chat with me about everything. All right. Thank you. <laughs> If you're driving, then you should wait. But if not, you should immediately go over to Instagram and search Twisted Roots Art. Don't pretend you're not at least a little bit curious uh, to see Marina's work. You can also visit twistedrootsart.bigcartel.com to see more from her. She sells prints of her work there as well. Now, since last week, I promised that I would begin doing some recommendations of my own. I have one for this week. My friend and future guest of the show, if fate will stop preventing the recording session from happening, Robert McPherson has taken his love of photography and of the night sky to the next level. If you visit www.rmcphersonphoto.com, you can see his work. And he's got a Patreon of his own, uh, of which I am also a patron. I encourage you to all take a look at his images. They really showcase the beauty of the Connecticut skyline and of the Milky Way. 
Uh, that website is R-M-A-C-P-H-E-R-S-O-N-P-H-O-T-O dot com. Don't forget, uh, leave a rating and review on iTunes, and you can follow the pod on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And of course, you can reach me at tabletostage at gmail.com. And at least take a peek at the Patreon page. There's, there's lots more content on there. Thanks for listening. Until next time, keep creating. <laughs>